Vortex, have you been noticing that I've been changing my glasses? I had an emergency this morning. I fell asleep reading last night, and apparently I slept on my glasses and they were broken when I woke up. This happened about a week ago. I passed out on the floor <laughs> putting up YouTube videos and <laughs> found my glasses broken sitting next to me and it was funny. I'm really lucky that super glue exists because if, if super glue didn't exist I'd be shit out of luck. Super glue really ain't that super if it's uh, still falling apart on me but whatever man. Yeah, I have two, I have two pairs of broken glasses, okay, which is funny. Can I squeeze in here? Can I squeeze in? Don't let me squeeze in. Kim, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think that you need to wave on the interstate. I don't think that's necessary. Well, you know what? I just wanted to wait. I just, I just wanted to be nice. Can you just let me be nice. All right, bitch. All right. <laughs> so, go on, go on, Centra, go on. You know, I complain about construction, and I complain about the potholes, and I complain about everything going on, and nothing ever satisfies me. Is that because I have a vagina, or is that just because I live in America, and I'm just so hateful? <laughs> I don't want to be hateful, though. I know that I definitely come across that way, as long as I don't act hateful. I felt bad yesterday because, like, it was really, really busy at work, and it was just like... We were just getting hit non-stop. And I was getting annoyed when like anybody asked me anything. And you know, I don't I don't get mad at people. Like I try not to give people an attitude. Cause I, I can't stand it when other people do that. You know? It's like the attitude is not necessary, dude. But most of the time, it's because some customer is, is making some outrageous request and they're being a little bitch about it. And so, you know, people get mad about things like that and they take it out on their coworkers, which is dumb because those are the last people you need to take it out on, but it's fine. But, yeah, I, I just hate, hate being like that in any form or fashion. But if I apologize for it, people are always like, what? What did you do? I don't, I don't remember what you did. I don't remember what you said. Like, because <laughs> I'm, I'm just very, like, aware of how sensitive people are, too. But I think that I'm just like, is it making that noise? I can't tell if it's making the noise. And there's no way for the camera to indicate that it's making the noise. So. It's just something we have to wait and see, you know? It might be making it now. Mainly, it's, it's like any time you go over bumps in the road and, and, and the thingamajig starts shaking. If this thing starts shaking, then most definitely it'll start making the noise. So just hold it, I guess. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, like, I've, I've worked with a bunch of people that are, like, you know. I, I'm convinced that they're narcissists or they have borderline personality or something. Um, now I realize that not everybody has a personality disorder. Am I like 
doing that thing where like, you know how gay people, like they want to make everybody else gay? Some comedian said that, I don't remember. I think it was Kathy Griffin actually. Kathy Griffin, she's straight too, but she said that she wants everything, everybody to be like more gay. Well, she got her wish. Most <laughs> definitely, but yeah. Do I do that with mental illness? Where I'm just like projecting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I do that. I don't want to do that, man. And I know it's it's not that simple. They're like, oh, this person's a narcissist. That person has borderline. This this person's histrionic. That person's a sociopath. This this person is schizophrenic. Schizophrenics don't leave the house. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know, Charter, uh, my, my comic friend, he told me that he thinks I have schizoaffective personality. I was like, don't say that shit because that shit's medicated. You know? Like, people that have schizoaffective have to be told that they have schizoaffective. And I, I think that that's kind of the issue with mental illness as well as addiction is like, you know, people, they tell you what you are. You're not allowed to make these assessments on your own. You're not allowed to like be aware of your experience and the things that you think and feel all the time and certain behavioral patterns that you exhibit on a daily basis, you know? Hello, State Trooper. Hello. I really like the State Trooper cars because they're really old school. They look like they're still in the 70s. We got so, uh, oh shit. Pothole. the only shirt that I have that's comfortable right now. I'm just going to wear it every single day during the summer <laughs> because <laughs> I have all these really tight tank tops and they're just, they're so uncomfortable in this heat. But uh, anyway. Um. Yeah, I think that, like, people are able to, like, pay attention to their experience and make their own assessment of what's actually going on. I think the reason why people employ a professional to do this is because they think that that professional knows more. Now, I understand why you think that. And I also understand the danger of going on the internet, just thinking that everything that you read applies to you. But I, I don't, I feel like there, there's a difference between like making like an honest self-evaluation, you know? Not just jumping to a conclusion like, this is what I have. Because I think that that's what a lot of people are doing. Um, But there's, there's the danger of the self-fulfilling prophecy, you know? But the self-fulfilling prophecy indicates that you probably have borderline personality disorder. So, that's probably it. You know, a lot of these people, they're, if, if they're freaking out because you uh, don't go along with their identity in any kind of way, they're probably like a borderline narcissist or some shit. Probably. I'm not saying they are, but if, if they react, if they react and, and they don't take any responsibility for the way that they react, they're, they're most definitely a dangerous person that you need to stay the fuck away from, okay? They're not going to be able to be helped because they can't, they can't see that they're at fault. They can't see how flawed they are, which is why they, they attach themselves to this identity. So... 
then they can be like, oh, well, you just don't understand me. And that's why I cut myself. Because you don't get who I really am. That's what's so sad about this whole culture is that they're pushing it on the most insecure people. They know. They know that they're insecure. So it's so easy for them to get away with it. Just like, you know, pushing screens on kids. You know, kids are like drawn to that because of the stimulation, because of the visuals and all that. Like, think about it like this. You're on LSD, right? Right? You ever been on LSD? Well, it's like, you have all these visuals. Well, it takes you back to being a kid. So when you're a child, and you see a screen that's got all this fancy shit on it, whatever that fancy shit is, it's like you're gonna be entranced by that. And <laughs> this friend of mine, her like stepdaughter essentially. She's raising her baby daddy's kid, okay? So, she said the little girl wets herself every time her mommy takes the tablet away. <laughs> I was like, just take it away permanently. That would be better for everybody. She ain't gonna listen to me. I mean, I know I'm not a parent, so I have no right to tell anybody how to raise their kids, but it's like, dude, like... <laughs> I, I guess she'd probably do that if it was anything. If it was any other toy, she'd probably do the same shit. So it's it's not like all the tablets making her do that. I'm not, I'm not so against technology that I want to blame everything on technology. I'm not so against psychiatry that I want to blame everything on psychiatrists. I'm not so against America, I want to blame everything on America, but I will say, a lot of these things, it's very politically incorrect to talk about the actual problems in this country. And I think that it's laziness that is enabling all these things to happen. So it's easier for a parent to just give their kids a toy and the easiest toy that they could give them would be, a, you know, a screen that just has all this stuff on it, you know? Like, I understand it from their perspective, like, why they would do that. And from a societal perspective, why people would choose technology so that they don't have to be bored. So they could just be mindlessly entertained by stupid bullshit on the internet. Yeah, I get it. But that's not good for a society. You know? In my dream, utopian society, we wouldn't have any distractions at all. We'd have to face our fucking problems. But, you know, that's why I don't run the